Hey guys, this is part two for the first episode of my Discord JS bot development series. Here I'm going to talk more about using a linter with your JavaScript code in Visual Studio Code to be specific, as well as more online documentation regarding Discord JS, the future of the series, as well as my Discord server where you can get support with your code, keep up with my series, as well as follow my current Discord bots. I hope you enjoy the episode. Take care. So I'm going to talk about one more thing before we head over to conclude. And that's a linter. Now linter basically helps you as a coder build good code ethics. And here I'm going to specifically be going to talk about ESLint with JavaScript. So here ESLint, you can read more about it, what the project is about. But linting is basically a linter analyzes your code. Not how your code functions, all that, but it analyzes kind of like the ethics of your code. Are you opening and closing the code with brackets and parentheses? Are you putting semicolons? Are you tabbing correctly? Are you um, breaking switch statements in each case? That type of stuff. That's what a linter helps. And if you have issues in your code, the linter will tell you that. And the really cool thing about linter is with a node application, you can, just like any other node application, you can install an NPM package, ESLint. That's where you can install it. So I highly recommend installing ESLint before you even start because it will let you know if something is wrong in your code. Now I'm going to show you how to install it, just like any other NPM package. Because right here you can see how to install it. So all you have to do is I'm going to stop the bot. And here I'm just doing Control c that automatically stops the bot. And then I'm going to do npm i, we can also do install, but i for short. And then eslint. Now, you also need to do save dev or uppercase D. And this is because ESLint is not required for the bot to run, but as you're installing as a development package, a new section will be created in your package.json called dev dependencies. These dependencies are not required to run the bot, but they can be still used within the bot. So what you want to do is just do npm i eslint dash D or dash dash save dev so I'm gonna go ahead and start ESLint I'm gonna get back to you when it's done installing so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about linters here and why it's really helpful as a developer you will make mistakes whether just just really simple dumb mistakes or they're really serious mistakes that could impact the usability of your code or the readability of your code if you're working in a collaborative state and NPM checks you and makes sure that hey hey Bob or hey Joe there's an error here at line 11 something's not right so let's say over back our app.js you know just remove this and do that so I'm gonna do this on purpose here and I have an ESLint config that I'm gonna create here it's really basic I'm still not having like messed around with a linter too much but I plan on doing more maybe even might install this ESLint config here which I'm gonna show you and it's the Airbnb so Airbnb has an ESLint config that is pretty extensive and it's a shareable config I'm not gonna go into how to share configs but you can share a config if you have one with other people and people like constantly download this it's, I have, I'm not using it right now, but I might at some point just tweak around uh, tweak around with it so it fits me. But you can come here and install this ESLint config if you want. Um, Crawl, the, one of the developers of Discord JS, he did a video on ESLint. I'm not going to go too much into it because I'm not that knowledgeable with it. But I will link that in the description and I will advise that you go ahead and check it out. Now ESLint is done installing. So I have an ESLint config here. All you have to do is go right click on the folder link in new file and make sure you type this dot es 
lint rc dot json and this is a new json file i hope i type this right paste this in so there's a few extensions i would recommend installing npm first off this allows npm support in visual studio Next is Beautify. Helps like Beautify code, but it doesn't like break code or anything, which can happen. I have GitLens. I use Git uh, repositories for like all my production bots and ESLint. You can use ESLint within your IDE. Also, Atom. You can use ESLint with an Atom. Since I'm not using Atom, I'm not really going to talk about it here, but you can search online how to install ESLint with an Atom. But these are just the different extensions I have installed here. You can take a look at them. Anyways, back to here. ESLint RC. Let me delete this file. Okay guys, I got it working now. So I just have to make sure I correctly um, identified the file as an ESLint file. So I'm gonna paste this in here. And I'm gonna go back to my app.js. And you saw me tweak around some stuff in there. So here, I'm gonna talk about my ESLint config. I just have it here, so node is true, ES6 is true, and these are just the environment. ESLint, I extend and recommend it, so if you want to know what to recommend it, ESLint rules are, you can go over here to the ESLint website, rules. And if you scroll down, you can see some of these have a little check mark, and this is just recommended. That's included when you extend ESLint recommended. And it enables rules that report common problems which have a check mark below. You can just scroll through here, I'll link this in the description. But I just have a few here. Some I even turned off because they're quite annoying and I use one-liners. I also have globals, so I can define global variables here and set them to true. And ESLint will know that, oh, okay, this is a global variable. I'm not going to throw an undef error whenever you get this. And that's also extended from ESLint recommended, hence why you don't see it in my rules. But I have some issues here. And let's go over the problems. So client is not defined, no one def. This is semicolon, client is not defined. So to fix this, you give a variable tag, that const, that fix these issues. But you have Mr. Semicolon here. If you click this, it'll take you right to the line, highlight that line in visual code and put a semicolon and all your issues are gone. Now, for any reason that you might have to define a global variable like this, there's two things you can do. You can disable a certain line and ESLint won't throw any errors with that line. You can just do this by ESLint, disable, line, and then the rule. Here is no one def. So I'm gonna disable this line. Actually, that doesn't work normally with global rules anymore. If you want to find a global variable, you can just go here. I'm gonna delete these in this project, honestly, because I'm not using this in this project. And I'm just gonna type in client. I'm gonna name it the true. If you go back here, errors are gone. So just if you want to define global variables, but I'm not gonna define that globally here. So I'm gonna go back here, add in const. So any problems in the file, any of the files in your workspace that you have open, it'll show there. That's for starters, you know, regarding lint, Again, I'm gonna link more information in the description regarding linters and overall this talk more about linters there. So we're gonna wrap things up in just a moment and talk about a few things. Okay guys, the first thing I'm gonna talk about that I mentioned briefly earlier is the official discord.js guide. And this guide is great. There's a lot of information in here that will help you get started with discord.js. And I highly recommend that you go look through this. Installing sample linter, config files, which I talk about more, setting up your files and command handlers, and meds permissions, just a ton of stuff. Next is an idiot guide, created in the beginning by Ezra Hans or EV Codes. Now an idiot manages it, an idiot's guide. And this is also a great guide. It's updated constantly, and there's so much information here like common errors, different guys like points, system, music bot, using emojis, starboards, which I just recently messed around with, stuff like that. And understanding like event handlers, roles and permissions, which you should really read. Just, you should really read through these documentations because especially if you're starting out, before going ahead and asking simple, basic questions that you should know, go read these documentations, both discord.js guide and an idiot's guide and then come ask questions it will be a lot better off having that knowledge in your head already plus basic javascript knowledge 
you should have some JavaScript knowledge, some understanding of how JS works in Node before diving into bots. You can dive into Discord.js with limited knowledge, but this can be more difficult because you don't understand the language that well and how to use JS and how to use the different events and embeds or databases and stuff like that. Also, as a hands, Evie, she has an accelerated JS tutorial and says like right here, simple and clear. Keep being told to go learn JavaScript. Tired of being a noob? This guy will speed you through some important JavaScript basics because we know you're a smart cookie and you can take it. And Evie presents to you some real life examples of each of the features she talks about here in her docs, like variables, different type of data sets, template literals, which I'm in love with, <laughs> I use all the time, modules, promises, functions. I'm still looking to, func to promises here since I've you know used them already, but still I'm trying to like gain more knowledge on promises and just expand my understanding of promises in general. But a promise is like, well, think of a promise in real life, and I'm you know kind of like explain here like I owe you. So I'll give this example. You gave your friend five dollars, and he said he'll give you back five dollars in four days. So you can set up a promise. You can set up a promise with what happens if your friend doesn't give you five dollars. What code will execute, and what happens if your friend does give you five dollars? What code will execute? So that's kind of like how promises work. And like here, math add. You have a function to add two different numbers, two and two. But this is not exactly how the, how the, this would be an incorrect way how to do it. And then this will be the correct way because you can see promises because it, it runs the function with the parameters in it, dot then. That's how you get the promise, you retrieve the promise. You make a promise. If you just do math add two and two, that's just gonna happen unless you don't use that promise. So that's kind of like what's going on here. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but that's just what I'm still learning. But this is another resource I would definitely check out. I'll have it in the description if you need help learning some basic JavaScript stuff. But again, check out all these links. They're super helpful, helpful to me, and I know they will be helpful to you. Now let's get into the conclusion. So I want enough things talking about, you know, where I plan for this series to go, what I plan on to do. I've been thinking about doing this series for a while and I'm pretty excited about it. So this is something I want to continue. And in the future, I'm going to be building a bot and teaching like how to build your bot for scalability, making sure you do the proper ways, making sure you understand the docs, you use the docs to your advantage instead of, you know, coming across simple issues or errors and not going to look at the docs first, but expect others to hold your hand and teach you the way of doing things. Because what I've seen for a while now is that I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start with like these YouTubers and I'm not trying to put blame on any of these YouTubers at all because they don't know the effect of what's going on. But a lot of these people get the effect that, okay, cool, this is easy. I can copy paste the code, start working. And when things break, I don't know what to do. So I'm just gonna pester people to fix this issue for me. And they're not learning the proper way of how I, how I believe coding comes. And when you're a coder, you're solving problems. And when you come across a problem, you can't always expect someone to be by your side, holding your hand to tell you, oh, this is what's wrong, fix this, that. You have to figure out some of these issues on your own. And you have to make sure that you're putting yourself in the right, point yourself in the right direction, like reading your documentation, learning JavaScript, and making sure you double check your code, do due diligence before finally asking someone for help. I know, you know, my way of doing things is going to be different than others and I'm not going to try and force down anyone. It's just I think that can help others by becoming better coders as I progress and hopefully maybe I can help you progress and anyone else who decides to watch this video progress. So I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff, you know, databases, more types of events and logging, command handlers, event handlers. I'm gonna talk about databases, specifically MongoDB, which is what I'm gonna be using in this series. I'm going to talk about Git, um, using like Bitbucket, which, and GitHub as well maybe, but I'm primarily use Bitbucket. And I'm gonna talk about Docker, which is you can run your whole environment in a container. So instead of running a whole operating system on a VPS, you can basically build like a container very minimal container to only run what you need to run so also more stuff you know if i check my notes here um 
moderation commands, you know, embeds, config files versus environment variables, storing sensitive information, stuff like that. I also have a Discord server that I'm gonna use, you know, that I use for my bots, but I think I might as well kind of like expand this into using for my YouTube series. And it's right here, Nerd Cave Development. I'm probably gonna change this Discord around to kind of like fit into like, you know, more commands or rules and moderation, which I already set that all up, but probably next episode, I'll probably have a full like Discord working more. Actually, no, I'll release a Discord in this episode you see the description below for the link. Also, you'll see the invite link here on the screen. I'll probably put in the info box at the top right of your screen. Anyways, I actually don't mean to do that. So if you need help with your code or you have questions about a video or anything like that, I advise that you join my Discord server and you can ask there. You know, I'll be more than happy to help. And really, I just want to build a community of coders who actually want to progress and eat dirt and have what it takes to progress as a good coder you know people because if you're gonna come in here and complain that the code that you copy and paste it isn't working you're not going to listen to those who are trying to help you then come in join this discord with the sole purpose of getting help with with your code it's not going to be the thing you should do you know not only you know people here using my bots are going to be here you know getting support and other stuff like that but you guys you know following my youtube series will be gain support for code and discussing of others, you know, other fans. So I'll leave more information about that in the description up here in the video that you can see regarding my Discord. So I'm into things off here, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any suggestions or improvements I can make, please let me know in the comments. It's been a while since I've done YouTube or any videos, so um, I'm gonna be rusty at this. But again, I will appreciate it and your feedback in the comments. So just comments. And I'm excited for progressing this series. So if you do want to keep up, then you are free to subscribe. I'm not pressuring anyone to subscribe here, but subscribe and turn on the notification bell too, since you know every YouTuber has to plug that. So thank you guys for watching if you did and take care. Goodbye.